Incredible act of the evening, Francesca! Hi, my name is Francesca. I live in Berlin and I love explaining the world to myself. <laughs> and when I don't understand it, I love explaining it to others. <laughs> How did this passion come about? Well, I first did a history degree in Cambridge. So I own a few silly gowns, <laughs> and I also know the answer to everything. <laughs> then I trained to become a lawyer in Munich, so I know how to drink this much beer. <laughs> and I know that my answers have to be bloody expensive. <laughs> Third, I worked as a management consultant, so I know how to sound very pompous. <laughs> because you have to sound pompous when you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and I also know that I need to sell you these expensive answers of mine in three bullet points. So what are the three bullet points I'm going to tell you today? I'm going to talk about mindfulness. We could also go for bodyfulness and have some really solid jokes about constipation. <laughs> Or we could go for body emptiness and have some really runny jokes about laxatives. <laughs> okay, we'll stick with mindfulness. So here are my three bullet points. First, everything you've heard about mindfulness, you're right. Second bullet point, everything you've heard about mindfulness, you're wrong. Third bullet point, what is this mindfulness anyway? <laughs> the clever ones amongst you will have discovered that the last one is not an answer, but a question. <laughs> that is the trick of a Hilloco historian, lawyer, consultant. <laughs> you need to keep them baffled at the end so that they keep on coming back and pay you more money. <laughs> <laughs> First time I heard about mindfulness when I was reading a book about the plasticity of the brain. You know that research which has proven that you can change and adapt your brain even after the amazingly ancient and decrepit age of seven. <laughs> so I was trying to remodel my brain, but more importantly I was trying to remodel that of my husband. <laughs> and his mother. <laughs> so in this book it said you should always try and be in the here and now. That'll doesn't sound too bad. I looked up and found myself in the S-Bahn of Berlin. <laughs> Next to me, a guy was snogging his beer bottle and playing a shooter game on his mobile phone. <laughs> Could it get worse? Well, the guy next to him was actually snogging the mobile phone and playing a shooter game with his beer bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I should choose to be in the here and now instead of a nice there and then. <laughs> I wasn't convinced. <laughs> so I read on. It said, if you learn how to meditate and be in the here and now, you strengthen your left prefrontal cortex against the amygdala. Mm -hmm. My left prefrontal cortex piped up and said, look, you know, I'm the only rational, calm part of your brain. And then you have this emotional, adrenaline-driven, ancient type of amygdala. Can you give me some ammunition against amygdala? And I thought, I very rarely hear from the rational part of my brain. So that, OK, I listen to that, and I sign up. <laughs> this eight week long course. <laughs> the first session, we did a 45 minute body scan and I was furious. Why? There I'd been living for years, decades actually, and no one had bothered ever to tell me that I had a body. <laughs> I mean, not any sort of body, but a real body, not the sort of one that I took to the gym ever so often. I sat on a bike, I was watching the television while the body was doing something, <laughs> then I took it off the bike, I washed it, I dried it, I filled it with beer. <laughs> <laughs> not that type of body, but a real body, the one who wanted empathy and wanted feedback. Let me ask you a question. Who of you has ever felt their sternum, their boost pain? <laughs> I hadn't had the acquaintance before until the <laughs> mindfulness teacher said, now feel your way into the breast bone. Breast bone? Breast bone. Um, and I said, oh, there's a breast bone. And my breast bone said, hi. And I said, hi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? And I said, well, bloody good that you asked me. You've never asked me in all those years, actually decades. And by the way, I'm really painful. <laughs> so that was it. I met this body part for the very first time in my life. And it was painful. How ungrateful was that? <laughs> <laughs> so after the class had finished, I went to the mindfulness teacher and I said, look here, 
if this being in the here and now ends up being more painful than the there and then, <laughs> then I think your mindfulness is rot and I don't want it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the mindfulness teacher said, you just go home and do your homework, sit with your sternum, your breastbone, six times next week. I'm an obedient person. I'm German. <laughs> <laughs> and I had also paid for the whole course up front. <laughs> of course I went home and sat with my sternum for six times. And I discovered that I became good friends with my sternum. I discovered if you don't call something pain, it doesn't have to be painful. Don't tell those sadomaso people. That was really <laughs> my prefrontal cortex was gearing itself up. It was calming down the amygdala. My stress levels were going lower. Until in the next class, I sat next to a man who thought that breathing should be hard work. <laughs> <laughs> and we were focusing on our breath for 45 minutes. <laughs> so after class, I went up to the mindfulness teacher and I said, <laughs> and the teacher said, Francesca, it's very normal. People get upset and irritated by other humans. I know this guru, and he was enlightened once for six months until he spent time with his mother. <laughs> so you just go home and sit with his breath, and actually with your breath as well, because that's a bit weird. <laughs> he didn't actually say the last thing, but I discovered that my breath was actually a bit weird because, of course, I went home, I'm obedient, I'm German, <laughs> I sat with my breath, and I discovered I had these weird little sighs. <laughs> so most likely the other guy had only been breathing so hard to cover my sign. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happened then, since then? Since then I've been meditating, I'm very happy in the here and now. I have actually discovered that I have no answers. I still have the silly gowns from Cambridge. <laughs> I've discovered that answers can be very inexpensive. I still have enough money to buy the beer though. <laughs> and I've discovered that I can actually replace the bullet points by some very mindful, happy, here and now sighs. And here I am now in Copenhagen, in the here and now, and all is well. But where's my luggage? <laughs>